entitled this message this evening, Finding Water in the Desert. Finding Water in the Desert. And I'll give a shout out to Pastor Tom, who's just run to the back and he's now working the slides. So I'm out of my comfort zone and he's out of his. But Jesus is glorified. Finding Water in the Desert. And we're going to look at this passage. And this is a passage of scripture that um, when the lockdown began, I read this uh, almost on the same day that this took place. And it just hit me between the eyes and I thought, oh man, this is me. This, this speaks of what's happening to me and how I feel right now. Psalm 42, verses 1 through 4. We're going to have it up on the screen right now. Miracles of modern technology. And the Bible reads like this. It says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants after you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day, Where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, a multitude keeping the holy feast. And I thought, man, this is exactly the way I feel. I love going to church. I love being part of the worship. I love it when all the people come in and, and the things are just taking place. You can feel the presence of the Holy Ghost and we have fellowship together in the things of God. I love those things. It's just so awesome. And right now I can't go. And this, this passage began to speak to my heart and my soul. And, and I began to think about what, what was taking place in David's life when he, when he wrote these words. And what was happening here, to give you a little background on this, David was exiled from Jerusalem. He was on the run. There was problems in the kingdom. And, and he couldn't go to the, to the capital. He couldn't go to the temple. He couldn't go and, and be part of the worship of God. And he was thirsty for God. And he missed it. You know what David was like. He was the guy who wrote the Psalms. He was Mr. Worship. You've heard of Mr. Motivator. This was Mr. Worship. And suddenly he's exiled and he can't go to worship God. He can't meet with the people. He can't enter in as the Bible says and David is in the wilderness he's on the run there in the desert in the, in the dry places and if you know anything about the geography of the holy land you'll understand that many of those places are arid it's dry it's inhospitable and to to keep the cities supplied with water they built aqueducts and these aqueducts, you know, we, we see them as kind of big bridges over massive ravines. Some of them were like that, but most of them were laid into the ground. It was a clay system brick built into the ground, covered over with slabs. And in the wilderness, you would see these deer, these wild animals. They would come along and they could sense the water there flowing just a few inches under the ground. And they were thirsty. They were arid. It was dry. It was hot. And they were panting and, and groaning out for this water that was so, so close but so beyond their reach. And David looked at that and he saw that probably as he was sitting there in the wilderness thinking about these things and he thought, that's the way that I am. My soul thirsts for God. I can taste it. I can, I can just understand and remember what it was like to be in God's presence and now I'm denied and I can't go there. And this can be where we feel we're at right now. Perhaps this describes some of the feelings that, that have been stirring and, and bubbling up in your heart as it has with mine. You know, we love the presence of God and we can identify with David, you know, that somehow we just can't have the things that we used to have. One thing to remember here is that this is talking about a primal thirst for water. And in the desert, water is everything. In the desert, the experience of being in the desert takes away all the surface and superfluous layers of life. It brings your life down to the basic necessities of survival. Because in the desert, you don't need the latest iPhone. You may feel that right now what you could do with more than anything else is to go down to Greg's and buy one of Greg's awesome pasties. But if you're in the desert, you don't need a Greg's pasty. If you're in the desert, you don't need a faster interconnection, internet connection rather. If you're in the desert, what you need is water. It's a matter of survival. And by stripping away the, these 
extra layers of our lives that when things are good and when life is comfortable, we feel they're so essential. We feel they're so important. We spend lots of time and effort and energy pursuing these things. But suddenly when something takes place, like this lockdown has taken place, like David's exile has taken place, the desert has a way of stripping away these things and showing us, revealing to us what we may not see in comfortable times. And that is what we really, really need the most. And David understood. He was saying, oh, I'd love to be able to go and meet and and join the people in the temple in the house of God. But he didn't say, I miss church. He said, I miss the presence of God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and be in his presence And that's the way it should be for us. That's the way it is for us. Amen. David understood. Do we understand? You may be kind of distressed. You might be kind of worried, fearful, uncertain, concerned about the way things are going to happen. When will the lockdown be lifted? How will it be lifted? Will there be an economy left? Will I still have a job? How are we going to earn money? What's going to happen? The virus is still out there. And we have all these things going on around us. Listen, Although we do need answers to all those things, we don't need answers to all those things. What we really, really, really need is to get a hold of God and have a personal, life-changing, heartfelt inner encounter with Christ. Because he can bring us the confidence that we need to walk through the desert and to survive there. If you're listening to this, you may be viewing this either online right now, in which case, good evening to you, or perhaps on a recording at a later time, and you're kind of questioning my words. Listen, it's a cliche, but the truth is, whatever the question is, Jesus is the answer. And I'm going to cover some of those things a little later on here, as we see where we're going. So we understand about the desert. We understand this desperate need for water. If you're in the desert, this is the key thing that you need. But how do you find water in the desert? How? Well, I've got some pointers for you here. And the first one, uh, you're going to find interesting. The first thing to remember, if you're trying to find water in a desert place, is that you won't find anything unless you're wearing the right hat. And you might say, what on earth are you talking about, Pastor Alan? That's nonsense. Stick with me for a moment. You won't find anything in the desert unless you're wearing the correct hat. Hmm, okay, what do I mean by this? When you're in the desert, you have to realize that the desert is fundamentally different from anywhere that you've been before. There are things that you used to do In the other places that you lived, in the city, in the countryside, in the town, in the village, you know, in the English Dales, wherever it was, there were things that you could do there. There were things that you would pursue there. There are ways and and means of behaving and living that you could follow there. They don't work in the desert. In the desert, none of those things matter. None of those things are going to help you. You've got to realize that the desert, the climate, the landscape is fundamentally different to where you were before. And you have to adapt your thinking. You have to begin to adopt a desert mindset. In other words, you need to put on your desert hat. And I dare to say that some of the people who are listening to this and and you're struggling with the times in which we live right now, you're chafing against it, you're finding it so difficult and so demanding and so stressful, perhaps the reason is you're not wearing the correct hat. Stay with me here. Let's think about this. For example, one thing you have to do in the desert, which is completely different to the way that we normally live, is you sleep and rest during the day when it's so hot. You try and do all your work and you travel at night. That's completely opposite to the way that we live. And if you want to make progress in the desert, you've got to learn to accept the desert, to accept its ways, to embrace it, to go with it, instead of constantly fighting against it. I've heard a lot of people railing against the lockdown, storming government buildings. I see things like that happening in the United States on Facebook. It's not happening here, praise God. But we see people, you know, they they won't accept it. You were looking at the BBC this last week. You would have seen the hilarious story of two, two guys, two bikers, who decided to drive from Rochdale to Whitby 200 miles to get fish and chips. 
Of course, they got their collars felt, they got turned around and sent home. But this is people like, they're just pressing against the lockdown. They won't accept it. They can't accept it. They refuse to be limited and pressed into this. But the thing is, they're wearing the wrong hat. All the anger and frustration and uncertainty and worry that you're feeling right now about your situation is not going to change your situation. It's not going to make the lockdown go any quicker. It's not going to open up the church any faster than what it's going to take place. We can either be frustrated and stressed and have our days filled with anxiety and and worry about these things, or we can begin to put on our desert hat, our lockdown hat, and say, you know what? This is where we are. Let me quieten my spirit. Let me begin to trust in God who's going to bring all things right in his time, and let me just begin to be filled with peace contentment is a powerful, powerful thing. Listen to this, Philippians chapter 4, 11 and 12. Not that I speak according to need, for I have learned to be content in whatever state I am. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. In everything and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. What a powerful statement that is. And here's another one for you. 1 Timothy 6 verse 6 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. Oh, some of us are struggling with these times in which we find ourselves because we haven't got on our desert hat. And you won't find the refreshment that can only be found in the desert if you're not wearing the right hat, if you're still looking for it. You're still expecting things to be the way they were. That's not going to be the way it is. We have to adapt. We have to put on the correct hat here. So quieten your spirit. God hasn't left you. God hasn't left us. Nor has God placed you on some kind of spiritual storage shelf where nothing is going to happen until the lockdown ends. That's not the way it is. There's growth, there's blessing, there's abundance to be found in the desert if only you know where to look. But if you're not in the right mindset, you won't even have it enter your head to go and look in those places. So you won't find anything in the desert unless you're wearing the correct hat. And now you know what I was talking about. But okay, so we've got on our correct hat. We understand that God can bless us and help us in these times. But where do we go to look for this water that we desperately need? Ah, water. Well, the second point is that if you're in the desert, you'll be walking around in this dry, arid landscape, looking at the features of the land before you, and you'll come to a kind of a, what looks like a valley, But as you begin to look at that valley, you realize that valley is not just any ordinary valley. This is a dried up stream bed. This is a place where water once flowed. And a fundamental principle of finding water in the desert is this. Water is often found where water flowed before. Water is often found in the desert where it used to flow before. It may not be flowing there now, but if you go there you've got a really good chance of finding some water. Dry riverbeds, places where there's vegetation growing, no matter how scrappy, places where animals and creatures go, these are all good places to dig. And I say dig very advisedly. It's easy when we're isolated like we are right now to spend our days just kind of doodling away, doing crazy things. Suddenly we have so much time on our hands, some of us, that we don't know what to do with all the time. So we go off and we invest our time and we find ourselves sucked into stuff like social media, Facebook and things like that. And you know, constantly repeating and checking the BBC news every 10 minutes to see what they've said this time. You know, and it, we just spend our time on these things. It's easy to drift and spend our days. But listen, just like those dry riverbeds in the desert... It's the places where you found spiritual refreshment before that you're going to find them now. Even in these times, the sources of refreshment have never changed. And this is a real good point I want to make to you. There is spiritual refreshment to be had. 
You can have an abundance in these times. I'm enjoying myself spiritually. I'm fired up. I'm stirred. I'm in touch with God. There's nobody in this building except me and Pastor Tom, and he's way, way over there. But you know what? I sense the presence of God, and I sense it every day. And I'm blessed, and I hope you do too. But the thing is, I said before, you have to dig in those places. And it requires a little more effort when you're in the desert. Normally, we would just turn on the tap and out the water comes. It's so easy. Normally, we would just go to church. And when you can go to church, when you can walk into a church, you know, you're just blessed. Everything is on tap for you. We have a team of people, and I give a shout out to all you guys right now, and ladies who are sitting at home watching this, and they work hard every service to make sure that they do everything possible for you to experience all of the presence and blessings of God that you can possibly experience. It's laid out for you on a silver platter. That's what serving ministry is about. But now, we don't have that. We don't have that. If you want that spiritual refreshment, you're going to have to dig it up for yourself. Amen. You have to be intentional during these times if you want to maintain your spiritual health and your Christian walk. Be intentional. Where are some of the places that we should look where water flowed before? Well, this list is going to be fairly obvious, but let's just say a few things about these. First of all, what about the Word of God? Are you spending time in the Word of God? Well, I'm sure that we're spending time in the Word, but which Word is it? What kind of Word are you listening to? I've been amazed at some of the, the stuff that's been burbled out, not only on social media, but even on some mainstream news media during these times. You know, there's one set of people jumping on a bandwagon trying to make their own points, and there's other people that, cons- you know, basically, they're just promoting conspiracy theories that, sorry if it offends you, but some of them barking mad. <laughs> You know, like 5G radiation is actually the the virus is piggybacking on the radio waves and 5G is being used by the virus so it can select the next victim to infect. I mean, come on. I have spent my whole life as a, a technician, an engineer, working on radio frequency projects. And I know that a lot of that is nonsense. They, they have a little grain of truth here and there, but a lot of it's barking mad. And the thing is, We can press into that stuff. We can open up our minds and our hearts to this. It stresses us. It gets us angry. We begin to look, you know, for a devil behind every lamppost, you know, and it's just crazy. But are we going to listen to that? Are you going to allow yourself to be influenced and your heart to be stirred up by these things that are all around us? Or are you going to press into God's life-giving word? Because the Bible tells us if you press into God's word, he's going to give you life, he's going to give you peace, he's going to give you certainty, assurance, a sound mind, he's going to give you faith, he's going to give you hope for the future, direction. You're not going to be worried, you're not going to be stressed, you know, you're not going to be washed by every wind of doctrine and everything that comes on the BBC News if you're pressing into God's word. Your feet are going to be based upon a rock and you're going to be able to say, I know that God's going to sort this out. It's only going to be a matter of time, and I'm going to get blessed when it's through. But it's a question of what you're listening to. What voice are you listening to? So press into God's Word. Press into God's Word and allow the truth of God's Word, the simple things, to speak life to you in these times in which we live. We have some awesome stuff online. I'll just give a quick shout out. We've got the real people, real power, the testimonies that are on there, all of our services. Pastor Tom's doing a sterling job and he's putting the sermons on, on YouTube. We, we live stream them, as you know, because you're listening to this. We have the podcasts. You can go back. You can listen to our services back from years if you go on the podcast archive. There's loads of word of God out there. There's all kinds of resources being made available. Take advantage of them and press into God's word. You really will know the difference if you do. Prayer. Prayer is another obvious one. We have Friday prayer. We pray at home. Please join us when we pray. You know, it's so easy just to cop out on that. You know, you don't have to come to the church building. So it doesn't matter whether I do it or not. Amen. But listen, it's like Pastor Tom said, being faithful in the little, you'll get blessed in the much. There's also a ladies prayer chat on on, uh, WhatsApp. 
which you can join into if you want to know about that. I'm sure that one of the ladies can inform you about how to get into that. But listen, as well as praying for specific things, oh Lord, end the lockdown. Oh Lord, you know, save this person. You know, God, help me. I need another job or whatever it is. Those specifics are good and God wants to answer them. But it's also a really good time and an opportunity right now to just be still and quiet and, and silent in God's presence. Just to spend time allowing him to speak to your heart, to reveal maybe the uncertainties and the worries that you have on the inside and why you feel that way to show you that some of it is a lack of faith and a distance between you and him and to draw close to him and let him draw close to you and begin to speak to and encourage you and bless you. These are really important things and this is an opportunity to do those things that you wouldn't get any other time because we're too busy. Don't throw that opportunity away. Take it. Come out of this lockdown stronger, closer to God, more, more like Christ, with all these things more sensitive to the Spirit. Come out of this stronger. Worship. Here's another one for you. Some of you are blessed with musical talent. I know we have some people in our congregation who can play instruments and, and, and just do awesome stuff. Well, listen. If you're at home, you're in your flat, you're in your bedroom, you're wherever you are, you get out that guitar, get out that keyboard or whatever, spend a little time and just worship the Lord. Just play your instrument and enjoy the ability and the gift that God's given you and express your worship to him through that time. And as well as that, on top of that, you'll be getting extra practice, praise God. So that's fantastic. But listen, take advantage of that and God will bless your spirit as you do. Some of us aren't blessed with physical musical talent in that way we can't play instruments well listen put on some worship music just begin to worship along with that just begin to listen to that and let it fill your spirit and you know and begin to minister to you and if that's not your thing let me give you one other one wait until it goes dark go outside and look up at the heavens because the bible says the heavens declare the glory of god and the stars tell forth his handiwork Go outside in your garden, look at the flowers, the trees, the, the bugs, the blue sky, the green grass, amen. God's worship concert is going on 24-7. If only you can open up your mind and your heart and go, whoa, what an awesome, wonderful, fantastic world God has placed us in, amen. Worship, spend some time in worship. Don't spend some time in worry, in fretting, in impatience, Spend some time in worship. Slow down and begin to appreciate God and praise him. Amen. And also, church. Don't forget church. Online church, of course. Social distance church. But we have services. We have devotionals. We have men's meetings on Sunday at 6 p.m. where we meet together online. We've got the things on YouTube, as I've mentioned. You know, I've seen some reports and it's kind of funny. A lot of people are working from home these days, and so a lot of companies are having these online meetings. And there have been some really rather sad cases of people turning up to these meetings looking disheveled in the pajamas with food stains down them, or even worse, I'm not going to give you the examples of what took place, but there's been some real social mess-ups on those online meetings. But listen, don't take online church like that. Don't just sit there and think, ah, oh, it's church, I suppose I'll log on and have a look. No, be intentional about it. You want to find water in the desert? Be intentional. Get ready ahead of time. Get your computer on. Begin to say, whoa, okay, right, I'm going, to, I'm going to separate myself to do this now. We're going to log on. We're going to participate. You know, I'm not going to sit there stuffing a sandwich in my mouth at the same thing. Whatever you wouldn't do in church, don't do online. Let's be intentional about it and have some reverence for God. And if we approach it in that way, with that kind of heart and attitude, you'll get much more blessing out of it. So there's a few things. The Word of God, prayer, worship, church online. And the astute amongst you will have said, did he miss out fellowship? Ha <laughs> ha, that's the next point. You see, one more thing about finding water in the desert is that it's always easier together. It's always easier when you have help. And those who travel the desert wastes, whether through necessity or by choice, they understand that the desert can be a harsh place. They understand 
the difficulties that the climate presents, the dangers even of being in that place. And they know and understand well how few and far between those water sources are. So desert people will always help one another. Even though they may be from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, the people who interact in the desert, they'll have a kind of a respect for one another, a mutual respect and a mutual honor that they hold one another in because they know that they're all in this together and they have to find water together. And the result is that they cooperate. They help one another out. You see, desert people will never pollute a water source. Never. They'll never abuse that resource. They'll always make sure that they preserve it for the next person because the next person is going to come along, use it, and then preserve it for them in turn. By passing it on, they get it back and everybody receives a supply. When they come to a water source, when they drink from it and are refreshed, they'll always make sure that they replace the stone, repair the signpost, put the bucket back where it needs to be, and help someone else to find refreshment in that place in the future. Proverbs 11, 25 speaks about this. It says, The soul who gives freely shall be made fat. Now, some people are saying, I don't want to be fat. Well, just stick around for a moment. The soul who gives freely shall be made fat. And here's the key bit. And he who waters shall also be watered himself. When it says fat here, just for those of you who are worrying about this, it doesn't mean obese. It doesn't mean fat as in the sense of Western fat that we understand it. Fat in Bible times was, hey, I've got enough food. My needs are being supplied. So if I can grow fat, that's a really wonderful thing. So it's saying, listen, the soul who gives freely will in turn receive enough for their own needs. And the one who makes their job and their business to distribute water will also be watered himself. So if you want spiritual refreshment... How about you begin to set aside a little bit of your time and your agenda to refresh someone else? And you'll receive refreshment in turn by doing that. Listen, it's not enough to just have thoughts about someone else. It's not enough just to think fondly about them and think, oh yeah, I really miss all those people at church. You know, I wish I could be with them. Uh, My grandmother, who's not with us, she she went, went to be with the Lord a long time ago now. And she used to have a saying, and she used to say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And at the time I was a kid, I used to think, man, that's a bit severe. (laughs) That's a bit of a crazy thing to say, you know. But she's right. You know, we have so many good intentions, and we never act out on them. I'm asking you tonight to act out on some of those good intentions and those thoughts that you have towards your brother and sister in this time. We can't visit one another. We can't meet together in church and have a coffee. We can't go out to Tim Hortons or anywhere like that. But almost every single one of us has a phone. Amen. Call someone up. Text message them. Go on WhatsApp. Go on Skype. Go on Zoom. Go on whatever. Insert the name of your favorite messaging platform here is. Contact them. Whatever. Even if you're of that ilk, post them something. Hey, our Royal Maid people, they need to be kept in a job and they need to be kept in business. We have some postal people in our own congregation. Greetings to you. You're doing a great job in this lockdown time. But hey, make someone a little card. You know, hey, thinking of you doesn't have to be a big deal. Doesn't have to be a big deal. Just something simple, just to say, hey, you were on my mind. I wondered how you were doing. How's everything going on? I'm thinking of you. I appreciate you and I miss you. That's all you've got to do. And listen, This is how easy it could be. If you get yourself a cup of tea, sit down with your cup of tea. By the time you've drunk your cup of tea, I guarantee you could have encouraged five or six other people in that spot of time. If you add a biscuit to that, make it seven or eight. Just 10 minutes of your day and you could bless so many other folk. Because the thing is this, other people are in the desert too, just the same as you are. And if you'll take a little time to pour refreshment into them, then you'll be refreshed in return also. And think of the difference that you could be making. Especially, let me just add, as a final thought here, those in our own household. 
We often don't have enough time to spend with our family. That's what we say. Oh, I'm too busy. There's all this stuff going on. I've got to be down at church. I don't have time to spend with my family. Well, guess what? Now you do. But what do we spend our time doing? Biting at one another and and arguing and messing about and being intolerant and things like that. Hey, you know, rather than letting friction be established in your home during this time, what about letting refreshment be established in your home? Use the same principle. Make a plan every day just to go out of your way to do one little thing for each member of your household. Mother, father, husband, wife, son, daughter, whoever it may be. Just something small, just to show them that you are thinking of them and that they matter to you and that they're valuable. And I guarantee it'll be a real blessing to their life. So take this time and opportunity to build up those closest relationships. Because we're in the desert right now. It will come to an end. But listen, this desert time has got some opportunities in it for us. If you'll only go to the places where they can be found and dig them out, you can prosper and you can profit from this time and come back a better Christian, a better person with new understanding and a new perspective on life. And I firmly believe that once the church comes back together, we're going to see a new dimension of God's presence and power. But it takes us pressing in. Wear your desert hat. Put on your desert hat. Begin to look for the opportunities and the sources of refreshment that are around you and seek them out. Spend time in the Word. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in worship. Come to church online and participate. Don't cut yourself off. Don't isolate. This is the time to draw together. And make sure that you take that time and you act on those thoughts. I know many of you have already had. Just contact someone, encourage someone, stay in touch with someone, bless someone. And I guarantee that God will refresh your own spirit as well. 